Hello, today we have Watsal who's going to be teaching us how to build one of this. Exciting! Hi Watsal. Hi Srinath. Thank you so much for letting us take this for a ride. It was so much of fun. So tell us how do you actually build one of these? Uh, Srinath, we got uh, this uh, normal kick scooter okay. from uh, nearby Decathlon and uh, we retrofitted into an electric version of it. So how we converted, uh, we got a motor, we got a controller and a battery, we packed inside this and it's now an electric version of it. Awesome. So you are going to see the insides of it? Yes, definitely. The first modification we had to do with this scooter uh, was to remove the wheel and that's not the only thing. Uh, we had to adjust the motor, uh, controller and the battery here in the rear part of this vehicle. So we had to extend this particular part. Uh, earlier the wheel was here and then we mounted some brackets with the welding and uh, this is how uh, we made the scooter a bit longer. Now with the housing ready, uh, we have taken uh, a 350 watt BLDC motor, uh, which you can see this is actually looks like a wheel. What exactly is a BLDC motor? So BLDC motor stands for brushless DC motor. So normally a DC motor will have a brush and a commutator uh, in order to provide uh, electrical connection to the rotating winding and to tape the current uh, or to feed the current to the motor winding which is rotating. Now, instead of that, this particular brushless DC motor will have a winding which is on the stator side or it's steady and it will have permanent magnet rotating on the outer periphery. So therefore, it's called a brushless DC motor and sometimes it's also called as a hub motor because it's uh, the construction of the motor is within the uh, wheel itself. So is that kind of similar to a fan motor because it seems to me like, you know, it resembles one uh, where the blades are rotating in a fan and there's a motor in the middle. Is this similar to that or is it something different? Uh, so this is exactly similar construction where you have an outer rotor and a ceiling fan has uh, also the outer rotor construction. So a ceiling fan motor, uh, the stator windings are actually kept uh, fixed with the ceiling and the rotor is outside and the rotor is rotating those uh, wings of the fan. Uh, the same construction, but the rotor here is made up of permanent magnets. So, if you uh, see over the periphery of this motor, you will find all the permanent magnets are uh, inserted on the periphery of this motor. So, the three-phase winding over here uh, gets the supply and due to the permanent magnet, uh, the rotor is connected over here. Uh, permanent magnets connected on the rotor over here the motor is going to spin. And let's move on to the controller now. Uh, how exactly does the controller work? Now, why it's called a controller? It's not just going to uh, rotate the motor, but it's also going to control the speed of the motor. So you mean to say it's something like a fan regulator. We can control the speed up and down. Yes, exactly. So in a ceiling fan, if you have seen a stepless regulator, that can help you to accurately determine the speed of the motor. Now how it works, it has a power converter in between. So you have an AC supply and you uh, triacs are used for changing the voltage across the motor. Similarly here, the inverter is used to change the voltage across the motor and frequency applied to this motor. So with that, uh, how you actually control? So you, the user has uh, in, uh, in his hand the accelerator or throttle we call it as and this particular accelerator is going to provide the signal through these three wires. So what you can see, uh, there are three wires over here and basically it's a pot uh, or I will say potentiometer. It's a variable resistance. So what you can see the red and the black wire is, uh, is a supply, 5 volt supply going to that and the green one is going to vary the 0 to 5 volt according to the position of the throttle in your hand. Now when you increase this, it's going to increase the voltage and therefore the controller will understand that I have to provide more speed and torque to the motor as per the uh, demand from the driver. So that's how uh, the controller is going to work. So motor controller uh, should be supplied with the power from the battery and here what you can see is the positive and negative coming through the switch is going into the controller. 
So this is a 24 volt connection and um, you can see this particular connector uh, will power on uh, this as well. Uh, the power goes to the other circuitry as well. You can also see this uh, XT60 uh, yellow color connector which is coming from the battery management system inside this battery pack and we are powering up uh, the controller through the switch connected in series over here and uh, it's wired with uh, its hall sensors and three sub three phase supplies so what you can see over here are uh, three main phases going to the motor winding and this three phases uh, will be driven by the inverter inside this so this particular motor controller is basically dc to ac converter which will give the supply uh, to the motor windings and in order to know the position of this particular motor uh, we, need, we need some uh, hall sensors so if you see this uh, particular uh, connector uh, it's basically uh, the hall sensor one so this one so here you can see uh, the red and the black one uh, which is basically going to provide the power uh, to the hall sensor and the remaining three wires are three hall sensor mounted 120 degree apart inside the motor and that goes into the controller okay so i have a question for you over here this is a dc supply your motor is a dc motor so why does a controller need to convert the current from dc to ac so we call this particular motor as a brushless dc motor uh, but actually it's an ac motor so you see the windings inside they are distributed from each other by 120 degree and they are three phase windings so it requires an alternating um, current uh, alternating means that it requires to change the direction of the current going through this how we can change the direction of current going through this so basically you are going to apply the positive and negative to this three phase winding alternatively so let's say for example i'm going to apply a uh, positive to blue and negative to the yellow one and once i have done that once the motor rotates for a fraction of uh, uh, revolution and then we are going to change the supply where the blue is a negative one and the yellow is a positive one and we are going to interchange this supply uh, like that the motor spins in a one direction continuously so uh, from the motor point of view if you take the motor and the controller together uh, it's a dc motor seen from the battery end but if you look at the motor alone it's a brushless dc motor and uh, you can uh, call it as AC motor and that's why the controller needs to convert DC supply into AC. And what happens when I you know, press the brake? So let's say these are the, uh, this is a brake lever uh, and there are two wires coming out of it. And these two wires are basically one for mechanical brake uh, for friction and the other wire is for sensing whether the brake is pressed or not. So those wires comes up here. So these are uh, the brake wires as you can see. And if you are uh, pressing the brake, uh, it's not going to give supply to the motor. So logically, you cannot apply the brake and accelerator simultaneously. And what about the battery, the battery pack? So here we have a lithium ion battery pack. And uh, this particular uh, battery pack is 24 volt and it has seven number of cells connected in series and if you consider around 3.5 to 3.6 volt per cell it is going to be around 24 to 26 volt and we have five number of cells connected in parallel in order to increase the total ampere hour capacity so this particular battery pack has total 35 number of uh, cells inside this so uh, where does the bms this battery management system come into play uh, figure out in all this because I'm not able to see it anywhere here. Uh, well, you will not be able to see this because it's inside the battery pack, but I have got uh, a similar uh, battery management system module with me. Uh, this is a kind of a small uh, module and uh, there is a battery management system IC, uh, which will be taking care of how much is the current flowing through or whether, whether it's charging or discharging and it is going to keep the battery pack protected. What you are able to see here, right, are all those wires. 
So here I have a seven cell series battery management system board and this particular uh, wire is a temperature sensor. Uh, you can connect it to the place where you want to monitor the cell temperature, the surrounding temperature to the cells. And these are the wires which will be monitoring all seven cell voltages. So these are a group of eight wires and they are going to continuously monitor what is a each cell voltage. And what about the charger? How do you go about charging? Uh, how do you go about designing the charger and the charging cycle? So, yes, uh, that's really interesting because when you run this uh, vehicle for a couple of uh, kilometers, right, and uh, uh, its battery is discharged, you have to um, think about uh, how to charge this. So, let me show you the charging port. So here we have a charging port and it has basically the three terminals but you can see we have just connected, we have just used two out of it. So this positive and negative are again connected to the same battery as well. So this goes to the same battery where we are connecting the same controller. Let me show you the charger. So here what you can see, uh, this is a charger box or it's equivalent to what you can uh, see as a normal AC to DC adapter with a little higher voltage uh, and higher wattage. So you can see over here it, it's going to charge uh, the battery pack till 24 volt and uh, it is going to supply around 2 ampere. So this particular battery pack is around 11 ampere hour and in order to charge this uh, fully discharged battery uh, starting from zero, it's going to take around four to five hours of charging time. And how frequently do we need to charge this? Uh, well, it depends on uh, how you are going to use this. Uh, and specifically, uh, also it depends on uh, how much is the capacity of this battery pack. So in, a, in an actual uh, electric scooter, you will have a kind of a bigger battery pack uh, lying below the base where uh, the capacity would be more. Uh, then you will get a higher uh, range and you, you will charge less frequently but in this case it's going to give you around uh, 25 kilometers of range i guess and uh, yeah it, it, uh, uh, that is the one thing how you are using the other thing is uh, how efficiently all the components together work and let's say the cap efficiency of all these components are uh, poor right uh, then this is going to be uh, kind of a burden on uh, the energy right so the amount of energy you put in to the battery it's not the similar amount of energy which you get on the wheels right so therefore you need to charge your battery in a uh, more uh, frequent way right so it depends on uh, individual component efficiency as well thank you so much Russell. that was a fascinating discussion i really enjoyed writing this and learning how it works and i'm going to take it back for a spin again I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, stay tuned to Skill Link.